Hello, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking, and today we're going to do a um, interesting uh, video. It's going to be a two-part series, and I'm going to do the first part, and we're going to call them both uh, Aliens, Antarctica, Our Crisis, and Their Crisis. Our Crisis meaning humans, and their crisis meaning aliens. So, Let's start off first. Uh, I want to kind of discuss uh, maybe a little bit on some of the conspiracy theories uh, in the Antarctica. Um, and I'll, I'll try to discuss some what my feelings are about them. This is not by far all of them. There's many, many, many of these conspiracies. Um, and some of them seem to have some validity and some are absolute crapo. So anyways. With that said, let's talk about a couple of the, the ones that I think are kind of at the top of the list uh, that people talk about uh, frequently. Uh, the first one is, uh, are there areas on Antarctica that are off limits uh, because there, somebody's hiding something, et cetera? Uh, well, let me first say there are seven countries that claim territory uh, in Antarctica. And, and they are, and let me read them off the list so I don't miss anybody. Uh, Argentina, Australia, uh, Chile, France, New Zealand, and UK, and Norway. Now, Norway is kind of a weird one because uh, think about it, Norway is way in the, the top in, in, in Arctic area, and of course, on the opposite side of the, the earth is Antarctic. So uh, how they quite decided they're going to take a little piece of that action, I have no clue. But here's the interesting thing, just to prove that there's probably nothing off limits, is the simple fact that none of the other countries of the world really pay attention to their claims. So basically what you have to do is, this is my understanding that if you're going to go in an area that is, you know, maybe claimed by, let's say, Chile, you know, you just kind of dial them up and say, hey, listen, we're going to come over here with our university so-and-so, and they're going to do a study on this, just kind of courtesy, and that's about it. Uh, because nobody's going to necessarily defend, defend it or, or, you know, send a fleet uh, to a battleships or something to uh, keep you out of there. So it, there really is no area that is restricted uh, there. Now, I mean, if you were, if you went in there and kind of somebody was working on a project or something, you went in there and started stealing their stuff, then I guess that would be an issue. But basically, everybody's pretty cooperative. I and mean, it's a vast area. It's hard to believe you even see each other most of the time, uh, except when maybe you fly in or get supplies or something like that. So anyway, so I don't think there's anything hidden um, uh, out there that anybody's you know, coveting, uh, et cetera. One of the next ones is the hollow earth. You know, there's talk about hollow earth. Uh, there's a lot of people that have written books about it, et cetera. I'm not gonna go into all those books or any of that, but, um, uh, one of the things, you know, I've looked at some of this and read some of it. I, I just don't really see any of them that have any real solid proof to this, okay? The only exception is Richard Burr. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard Byrd, uh, Admiral Byrd. And he did an expedition there uh, back, golly, uh, I guess it's probably a good, almost 100 years ago. No, actually not quite 100 years ago. He, yeah, it'd be over 100 years, actually. Anyways, um, he did talk about in his diary uh, an area somewhere, is, I guess it was, I don't want to say real close to the South Pole, but in that area, general area, that there was an opening. And he did talk about finding some interesting things in there. And it was he was kind of secretive about it, etc. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of believe there is probably some type of hole there uh, or some kind of opening. Uh, I don't believe that it leads into, you know, center earth or middle earth or whatever. Some of these other people, I just don't buy into that at all. Um, so anyways, um, the, the, the interesting one, if you want to read is the diary of uh, Richard Byrd, and he does talk about it, but you must also listen or look at it from a standpoint. He's quite secretive about it. So it gives you a little bit of a pause, you know, what he may have seen or, or heard there. Uh, in this whole area that he talks about. Um, so anyways, so again, I, I think that's your best bet if you're interested in that. 
there's also talk kind of related to hollow earth and uh, etc was this this area where close to the south pole they always talk about they got to keep their their stations or whatever away from it because there is a hole there of some sort now that does play into the richard a bird thing right the hole but you know i do have i have a friend that has a daughter that actually has has not only been there she's worked there several times for several periods of time actually almost up to a year each time she's been there several times and she what she is saying that you know, they, they talk about there's UFOs flying in and out of there. Now, she says she knows most of the people on the stations that are closer to the South Pole. And she said that um, as far as she's concerned, you know, everybody's working on things like ice issues and um, they're working on uh, some kind of biological uh, uh, experiments, uh, etc. But they're now working on UFO stuff. Uh, and she would probably know, she said, if they were. Uh, but she did say this, that there is quite a bit of lights in the sky. And there is kind of, I guess she would call UFOs there that they see at night uh, there. Um, and uh, so she, she's not a believer in, or a disbeliever, but she's kind of neutral on the whole situation. But anyways, she doesn't believe there's any special... A uh, special hole that they got to watch out for, et cetera. The stations are put there wherever the ice, the ice or the the area is stable. Uh, if it's going to be over ice or on a glacier, then it has to be stable. If it's on a land surface, they got to make sure that underneath most most of the areas have some type of a snowpack on it. There isn't just sheer rock, uh, but there is some places she said had sheer rock, and those are places they typically do not want to put their stations. And the reason she said that was because typically sheer rock usually means a very windy area. And one of the things you'll, you may or may not know, not only is it cold there, and they do have some snow, but they don't have as much snow as most people would believe, but they have tremendous winds there. And that is one of the biggest problems there on, in Antarctica is the winds um, for these stations that are kind of scattered all around uh, the South Pole area. So then um, there's also talk about these magnetic fields and that if you go on there, you go on the uh, uh, South Pole, you with a compass, you're trying to find something, everything is all, all changes and it's spinning and it's doing all kinds of things. And guess what? That is true. But it's not done to keep people from finding things. It's done because it's a natural phenomena of the South Pole or Antarctica. Um, it's just nature. It's just the way the way in this same thing happens on the, the North Pole or on the, in the Arctic, where this the uh, the pole, the uh, magnetic fields on the pole vary and they, they not only vary, they move around, etc. cetera. Um, so that's really it. It has nothing to do with anybody trying to muck up with your compass and try to keep you away from some certain areas. Um, so. So let's see what else we got here. Oh, okay. Then another one of the, the famous ones is the underwater or under, yeah, underwater submarine base of the Nazis. So, you know, I did, I did a lot of research on this one and I could not find anything that honestly felt halfway reasonable on this uh, as far as the Nazi submarine bases down there. Now I did find out that the Russians back oh, I guess it was probably 40 or 50 years ago, actually found an underground or underwater kind of base in uh, the Arctic of Nazis uh, that they found with all kinds of evidence, et cetera, uh, that it was kind of under the ice, but it was also kind of went into a land, into a, like an island, et cetera. And that's where they had, they would keep some of their um, uh, submarines there. Uh, to attack in, nor in the North Atlantic area. So that, that was it. So as far as the South, you know, I, I realized that some of the Nazis supposedly went to Argentina and that is pretty close to the South Pole. I, I kind of get that whole thing, but I think this one is kind of a myth uh, unless somebody comes up with some really strong evidence to that fact. And I have not seen it yet. Um, there's a lot of interesting, fun stories, but no, no strong evidence. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Tropical. 
you know, there's always been these things that there is these, maybe in the big hole or whatever, there's these kind of tropical paradises. Well, again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to poo poo it 100% because who knows, but there is some truth in it. The land that the Antarctica is on at one time was tropical, but here's a little trick. It was 90 million years ago. And chances are, and I think this is what the theory is, is that that landmass actually migrated, migrated from our pole, uh, from our equatorial region to, to Antarctica. And there was some evidence on there that these have some fossils, et cetera, of tropical plants. And that is true. That is definitely true, but nothing recent within the last million years or so to, to indicate that these things are, are much more recent. Uh, these are fossils from way, way, way back. So anyways, there is, as far as you know, everybody's concerned, and I actually questioned that. Uh, I had my friend's daughter, she, he questioned his daughter on the tropical part, and she told exactly what I just told you. Because uh, they're they're aware of it. I mean they they know the history of Antarctica and they have a lot of time down there to read books because it's it's a long long dark cold windy uh, winter or darkness uh, season of darkness. Um, so next pyramids on Antarctica. Now in this one, and I'm talking about photographs. Okay. On this one, I, I went ahead and did a lot of research and looked at a lot of photographs or, or supposed photographs of these pyramid structures. Now, I have to be honest, you know, from a distance, some of them look reasonably in the shape of a pyramid. Now, I don't know if you, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a professional photographer. I take photography, I consider myself kind of an amateur. And, you know, come to find out, or also observe things from a distance. Come to find out the farther you are away from the actual object, the more it's completely looks different than reality when you're close up. And I think this is the case in some of those uh, photos I looked at. The other photos I think are straight out Photoshopped, okay? Uh, and, there, and some of the other ones, eh, kind of iffy. Uh, so I, I don't really feel strong that there's some super strong evidence that these are actual pyramids. The issue with you know going and seeing if they're pyramids again is the, the the conditions. I mean, obviously we're talking about wind, we're talking about cold, we're talking about lots of snow, and these things are fairly well buried, and you just can't get to them easily. Um, you know these these shapes, you just can't get to them and actually look at them. I mean, you'd have to go there, be right next to them, look at them. Uh, you know, analyze them, see if they were, how they were built, if they were built or they're just natural. I don't think they are, to be honest with you. Could they possibly be? Sure. But I, I don't think so. Uh, maybe we'll find out someday. Who knows? Okay. So last but not least on all these things. And again, this is just touching the surface. There's all kinds of uh, conspiracy type theories. Some of them, you know, could very well be valid, but the, the ones I'm looking at for the most part aren't. Um, the other, the other thing is, and I saved the best for last, I guess, is the UFOs and aliens. Um, so on this one, I'm going to, I'm going to reference back to my friend who is a black, was a black ops guy for the government. And, and I mentioned him in several of the other videos. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go into the rest of his background and what he's done, et cetera, et cetera. You can go back to those, some of those other, re, see some of our other videos and you'll, you'll hear some more about him. Anyways, he was on a, a top secret mission in Antarctica one time. Okay. And he never told me just so everybody understands. He never told me what the top secret mission was, but uh, I believe he was going on a top secret mission. So he flew into, um, let me think, it's Mer, Mer, Der, what is it, McMurdle? McMurdle, that's it, McMurdle, <laughs> McMurdle Station. And that's kind of a, that's a big station. You know, it's kind of has a military feel to it. It also has a, um, you know, a lot of universities and people doing projects in Antarctica go there. I mean, there's other countries have other stations, but that's kind of ours right there, even though probably other countries also can use it. So they come in there, but a lot of supplies are brought in there by a ship. And a lot of them, of course, are brought in by plane. 
And so anyways, that's where he, he started. And then, so he was, he was there. He was there getting his orders or, or talking about the mission, et cetera. And um, anyways, they, they came to him and said, hey, you got a little bit of a submission while you're, you're going to your destination on this mission. Um, so he said, wow, okay. So what the mission was, is he was to go to a location and observe. All he had to do is go there and observe. So anyways, I'll tell you the rest of that in a minute. So anyways, he, they, get him, they get him on one of those uh, cargo planes, C-30s with uh, several of his peers. And they're gonna go, first of all, they gotta stop off of a place called Eights Station. Uh, which is uh, eight station is uh, it's hard to tell the directions in the South Pole because of the fact that you know it's the South Pole. So, anyways, it's it, eight station. I think was located uh, off off of uh, uh, Wendell Wendell C uh, off of the Wendell C. And so he goes up there. They drop off some materials, pick up some things, and then they're going to go. They're going to fly by a mountain range, and the mountain range is called Ellisworth. And Ellisworth happens to be one of the highest uh, mountain ranges there. I believe Mount Ellen Ellsworth, Ellsworth is uh, the highest uh, peak on Antarctica, I believe. I think he said something like that. I think, he, I think when I looked it up, it was 16,000 feet. Anyways, so, he's, so they're going to fly by this mountain range. And what they're there for is to observe because apparently every time people make a flyby, or many times they make a flyby, they're seeing these types of UFOs. So he, he was kind of excited and he always speculated the reason they ask him, and this isn't the first time. He's had other sightings around the world with other, other things, missions he was on. Not only that, but I also talk about in some of the videos where he's actually had clo fairly close encounters with aliens grays and reptilians. So he, he's not, this is not a new rodeo for him. He's done this before. And for some reason, as I've talked about throughout some of my videos, is that people that start having, especially young, young uh, from a young age on, start seeing, vid seeing um, UFOs and even saying gray aliens or even a reptilian, uh, you will continue to do that. It's almost like you gain an ability to do that. So he is one of those people that have that ability uh, because he saw him when he was a kid and he's seen him throughout his career with the military. So anyways, he says he always thinks that they know that, the government knows that, and they always send him on kind of these crazy missions to either look for UFOs or look for aliens or whatever. So anyway, so he's flying by, they're flying by in this mountain range and he's there looking out, and it wasn't just him, it was other guys that were other guys on his team. And they were looking out, and there they were. There was a fleet of small, he said, I guess they got them on radar too. He said they estimated to be 20 feet apart, small little silver ships. And this was a daylight sight, sighting. So that would have meant that it would have been, I guess, either in spring or autumn. Right now it's autumn there. So that means that there is light and dark. It isn't that it's all, all one or all the other. Uh, like it is in summer and winter, in our summer or our winter here, um, down there, though. So anyways, um, so he saw him. They saw him. Several people saw him on the flight, and they were, they were moving towards that mountain range. And so he was kind of excited, excited to report that they did see him and confirm that there are these things. They didn't confront them or anything. And not that they wanted to, they were in this C, I think he said a C-30 or something. Um, so it wasn't much of a confrontation there. Then he wouldn't want one anyways. So anyway, so he, he goes and they do the little mission and whatever that was, top secret. And then he gets, but they get back on the plane and they, they fly back past it. And this was, this was dark at this time. And he said, then they saw lights going in the opposite direction. And, if, and I, think, I think he said it was like uh, 10 or 12 of them. And it looked like the same shape. And the, I mean, the same, well, the same size on the radar because he couldn't really see them. They were just kind of lights, uh, kind of a light uh, in the sky. So anyway, so he's able to confirm that. So I guess with that said, and I do trust my resource on that. I do trust this, this guy. Um, and he, he told me that 
he felt pretty comfortable in saying to me that there are bases, at least one base that he's aware of and I, and in Antarctica. And of course, with UFOs, there's aliens. He believes there's aliens too, and there is a base there. So anyways, that's it for the part one. Now in part two, we're gonna continue this conversation about aliens in the Antarctic and our, our crisis and their crisis coming down the road. And, uh, and we'll see what that's all about, connect some of the dots maybe. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. The next video, part two, will be, this premieres on Friday. And if you see this on Friday, then the next Tuesday, part two will, will uh, premiere and we'll go from there. So anyways, thank you very much. And uh, please like us. If you like us, please subscribe. I need my, we need our subscriptions. We really, really do. And if you need to uh, contact us, besides on the YouTube uh, comment, you can also contact us at dimensionalwalking at gmail.com. And uh, hey, thanks a lot. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.